Hi and welcome everyone! It's another Friday and we are greeting you with another interesting, we believe it's an interesting subject we are going to be talking about uh, today. And we are going to be talking about why some relationships last and some just don't. Is the question that has been, uh, I think, asked by many you know couples or individuals before like why this time it didn't work out and the truth is that every and let me know if you agree with me every relationship that uh, even the one that hasn't been successful and didn't go all the way through to marriage for example um, every single relationship teaches us something something new gives us some kind of a new lesson something that well, if we choose to do so, moves us forward in, in um, order to, you know, understand ourselves and how the whole thing, uh, partnership works in general. Today, I want to welcome you all because we are going to be talking very interactively um, about about this subject, and we look forward to all your comments and you know, um, any any hints, tips or questions you might have. And in this moment, very, very soon, I'm going to welcome with us also my friend and fellow coach, Susanna Taylor, who just joined us. What amazing timing today. <laughs> yes. So Hi. welcome and thank you thank for you. being here. No, thank you. I'm so, um, thank you for having me. I'm always so happy to be here. <laughs> We are very happy to have you and because it's um this month is still we are still in may and um it's month of love they say uh we are still going to be talking about relationships about love and um you know about all the exciting things so whether you are in relationship or you are in uh, not in relationship or you're looking for someone or you just got divorced or wondering what's going on with your life or you are someone who is uh, happy and complete we welcome all of you and uh, before we briefly introduce ourselves so today we are going to be talking about why, why some relationships last and um why some don't and um I, I've got a couple of questions for you uh, during this streaming, but you know, the first question, Zuzi, I didn't tell you about that one. Mm -hmm. I want to give you is, is the interesting one. Okay. So consider that there is an alien who comes to this planet and knows nothing about us and about how we operate here on this planet. And you are the one who is supposed to, you know, describe or you know like explain what the love is what would you say someone or to, even to a child it doesn't have to be alien because child's got these questions now children also so let me know in the comments and welcome everyone joining us we are asking how would you describe what is love to someone who doesn't know at all visit the alien from different planet what is love between people mm. Mm. yeah very good question <laughs> yeah. and uh, while you are thinking and take your time and then send us uh, comments and by the way you know love in different uh, episodes or different um, chapters of your life can have a different meaning very different meaning so maybe you know it's good to check in with yourself what love means for you in this stage of your life um and it's kind of good checking with you like where you are um in in life right now so let us know there is no wrong answer and everything will be yeah. very beneficial not just and while you're saying it you know it's really great because it is true and it's nice to when i'm thinking about it because uh you know we i wasn't i didn't hear this question before so from you so i'm thinking as well um live <laughs> so this wasn't prepared um yeah when you said you're know, like it, it's it's different when you you know love is different or you're feeling love differently in different stages of your life and it's true and that's to me 
that's the that's the um, like kind of different um, layers and different dimensions of love. You know, love is everything. Everything that is that, you know. So yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Great, great. And uh, we, we will read the comments a little bit later, but please keep on sharing. In the meantime, very briefly, we are going to introduce ourselves. Ska, would you like to go ahead? Yes, thank you. Um, so thank you for having me again. And I'm so happy, happy that you're watching us and, um, and that you, you're commenting. And it's so nice to, to read those comments and, and you know, it feels really nice to have you with us every time. And also when you're watching the replays. Um, so I'm Susanna Taylor. I'm a transformational business coach. I'm also an EFT practitioner and I help women to be their true selves um, so that they can have a successful business and whatever they want in their life um the way that is it feels right for them and it, it, it's aligned with them if i can you know describe it in, in in it's it's always like i i like to say it differently every time because it's all of the, all of what i say so every time i might say it's slightly different but it's all everything that i do mm. <laughs> mm. yeah Sometimes it's How about not you? easy to uh, put it in one sentence, right? It is, it's, no, it's, sometimes no, it's our, our biggest challenge, like even like when they asked me in a hospital the other day, like, what do you do? <laughs> like, oh, let's talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but you know, you, you briefly say, it, once it's happened to me and when I said, um, did I tell you that? I don't know if I ever told you. Once I had a little surgery and they had to put me under... Um, uh, for anesthesia right mm. like put me to sleep and um just before they ask you these questions to relax you and it normally is like what do you do and you know it's quite easy when you say teacher or nurse or something but i said life coach and they've been just injecting me so they knew they only have a few more seconds to find out what it is you know <laughs> before i fall asleep and they got so interested you know like uh, the nurse and uh and uh, and the doctor but uh, the doctor got interested and the nurse misheard me and she said oh so you're very good at swimming because they <laughs> and doctor said oh you stupid like she's not a lifeguard she's a lifeguard <laughs> so i literally i was falling asleep cracking up you know i must have been like in laughing attack and it suddenly switched me off so it's quite a funny story about my profession anyway uh so, <laughs> do you remember do you remember at what bit you fell asleep <laughs> um, I, I just i just been there and i was laughing and suddenly i was gone you know <laughs> but it was it was quite nice. funny but, um yeah La falling asleep while you're laughing is probably the best way even though it doesn't happen probably normally right uh so quick anyway so anyway, my name is Lucia Hoxha, as I mentioned, I'm a, I'm a life coach, I have been, uh, I'm transformational um, fertility mindset coach uh, specifically, and also working with women uh, in areas of relationships, meaning, um, you know, I'm someone who is a stand for you to have a, have a great life, and uh, life, the kind of life that at the end of your days you are able to look back and think do you know what it was so worth it mm. i would do it again i would do it again and i wouldn't you know i wouldn't change nothing because everything what was i'm whole and complete with and i lived my life filled with love and it was a free life that i chose myself and it was a life that i loved so i'm the kind of person who loved to live this kind of life and i Thank God I live it and and I have a great family. I'm mom of two little girls. Uska is also mom of a boy and a girl, a little bit older than we are. And yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, we are not here to talk about like how to live the lives we are or we didn't become a coach is to tell you what to do because that's not really what we do. But we are really just people who 
uh, like to share, like bring people together and like to make sure that we leave some kind of legacy or something behind us in terms of contribution, in terms of making making difference in lasting difference in your lives. And that's why we are doing this streaming as well. So um, hopefully it's going to be interesting and you will find something for yourself um, and please feel free to be interactive. So our first question, just to remind you, is what love means? How would you de describe love to someone who doesn't know what is love, some kind of alien or a child? Uh, what love means for you? How would you describe it? So put put it in the comments. We are very, very curious. Zuzi, you had some time. <laughs> so what, what I mean, and, and it can be first thing that comes to your mind, you know, there's no... Yeah, well, the first thing that came to my mind when you were saying it now, it was my children mm -hmm. and obviously my husband, but my children and I just... Um, came from sports day my uh, it's a sports day in my kids school and it was my son's um turn this morning and then i'm going after this streaming i'm going to my daughter's sports day and he just gave me he, he came to me running to me and he came to me and gave me a big hug and said mommy i love you and i i get goosebumps now because that's love that's love and it's one of one of the forms of love. So like I was saying in, in like I was saying before, um, love, you know, to with to my my husband, my parents, um, myself. Mm -hmm. But how do you describe it? Um, it's a happy feeling, feeling warm, happy, uh, tingles in my tummy, yeah. uh, smiling you know all the hacks so yeah mm. yeah it could go on and on so yeah it is it is it is the kind of um you know me and my husband what came to me because it's is i think it's how we can talk about theory right but just like suska gave uh, gave that goosebump experience with her son uh, I also had a little one with my husband actually this morning and it was very practical. I was doing some banners for his business and and doing him some invoices and stuff and I really spent the time to make sure that it's beautiful and it resonates with what he really does and you know how he does it and with his kind of energy. So I spent like three days doing this banner. I'm very happy with it now and I sent it to him and da 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 and there have been some technical issues so you know it, it took me a time but i finally sent it to him and and he was happy with it and i don't know like it for me it again reminded me this experience the, that kind of feeling that we are partners in everything you know he needs something that he's maybe not that good at we you know he's not good with these things so much so you know I do it, I take over and, you know, and I, I really wanted to do a do, do good job because we are kind of like one, you know, yeah. like we are like partners and we support each other in, you know, he's good and different kind of things. So I've got a couple of chairs he will repair when he comes back. And that's what it is. You know, love is a partnership. Love is that we are standing next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. When, when life gets hard, love for me is... You know that feeling that we don't even need to say it we just know mm. yeah like yeah we uh, say it, we also say we are a team you we know, are a team in, we are a team you know we we can agree we can disagree but we are a team yeah so yeah, yeah. <laughs> L love is that exactly cozy feeling that you feel that that kind of love towards yourself it can be just uh moment we have in Brezno we had a week full of you know rain and storms and sunshine and storm like that kind of heat storm and then rainbow and every weather change I just love storms right but funnily enough it reminds me of love towards myself because every time it gets from the you know hot hot weather I go on the balcony and I just enjoy that energy mm. of thunder and and it reminds me of who I am and it reconnects me with with the fact that I am the force of nature and 
I, I don't know how to explain, hopefully it makes some kind of sense, but it just like little things and that is love towards you you know that acknowledgement that you have that that little time you give to yourself in order to enjoy the moment to oh, look forward to something that you know that is going to make you happy to smell something that oh you know like it make it gives you some happy yeah. memories from the past whatever it is you know there are different forms of love so right to us and maybe even like uh, specific examples like we gave for example now like when did you last time felt that warm love type of feeling and it can be with your dog it can be you know yeah. with your children nature universe you know we feel that we feel that we, we can't describe it exactly but you feel it when you see beautiful flowers for example or you feel that you're part of, or when you're swimming in the sea and you feel that part of this, this universe, this planet, this, mm -hmm. you know, the mother earth, you, you feel it. That's love as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let us know. <laughs> let us know. We are going to wait and read your comments and interact and have fun as well. We are talking about love and, um, we are going to talk specifically about why some relationships last and some don't so let's start with this one uh because i really need to finish on time today um and uh so so let us know like this is a question i'm giving a lot of questions but i really want us to have a little banter so why some relationships last and some don't and it doesn't have to it obviously it will be from your own experience how you view it how you see it and also it can be your own experience or some you know observed experiences from the couples that you observed you know maybe you have in in uh, uh, in uh, your life you know some some couple old couple who are still you know walking holding hands um, and really having genuinely nice relationships like i always love to ask these people like what is it mm. uh, so we can share about those as well so see what what do you feel like we will talk about it more but what what is first that is coming to your mind why do you think some relationships last and some don't i think for me um what is important is communication communication in everything like being able to and it's not always easy being able to for 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 myself being able to um communicate how i feel what's going on and to let let my partner or husband know what is actually happening so that he doesn't have to guess or wonder or you know or and make his own story makes his own story and doesn't know what's going on mm. um so i think communication is one of the things that's what that's what came to me and also on his part you know that's how i feel i would feel like okay i need to know what's happening what's going on or yeah and then then when we communicate because we mentioned we have children so they learn they see as well and they copy and they communicate mm -hmm. and express their what's going on their feelings what's happening in their life and and yeah so, so that is i think that is one of those things and communication and being able to listen and hear what the other one is saying uh or what signs you know what signs they're showing emotions and 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 try and try and if they're not saying anything try and communicate to yourself so i you know asking those questions like i see this is happening what do you want to tell me what's going on or what are you feeling or what's happening so that is that is i think to me mm. one of the important things mm. It's an interesting thing, like communication, because I will just add into it that, you know, people never, it's very important to re, like 
to be aware of the fact that pe people never break up because, um, you know, partner doesn't agree with me. We never ditch the partner because he's got a different opinion. Hmm. What really uh, is what separates relationship is when the differences between us are not being acknowledged and accepted as an alternative view or point of view that is also acceptable yeah mm -hmm. like i remember when i was really you know myself transforming myself and into personal um, personal development and my husband was very new to this yeah he doesn't even he didn't even know what is yoga or coaching or nothing at the very beginning of our relationship and i was like really you know turning myself inside down my my you know because it can be very messy inside you i remember <laughs> years after he said to me oh you know i was just staying with you because you had a really nice bum but it was a bit too much you know and and he was like what personal level what, what is you know he was so not in into these things he was as distant to him as the universe when we when we met he didn't know uh obviously living with me and and you know be, being attending my retreats and all sorts of things the yoga became something uh, later later on that that was uh, normal to him yeah mm -hmm. uh, and and he was even using my language later on and even now uh, but at the beginning the, the, the difference in terms of what kind of environment he came from and where I met and and yeah, I was like big. miles away never yeah. mind different country different languages different you know so you know on a basis of this really we are not supposed to stay together definitely not I think it's 11 years now we are celebrating so um for, for that long and um what I'm trying to say is that yes he didn't maybe understand but he wasn't judging it he wasn't writing it off he wasn't making laugh or fun of me because i think that's what is being hurtful if we have a different kind of opinions on on something that is especially on something that is dear to us like the way we want to bring up our children or you know something really important to us and the the other person is you know disrespecting this this view and we are not feeling like we are being hurt that's where mm -hmm. the shouting and frustration and and the, the clashes the storms arguments come into so you know it's it's very underestimated but maybe one of the one of the sentences that that could save a lot of relationships if it's said genuinely and if some work is being behind it done uh is is just simply saying i understand i understand yeah. where you come from i i hear you i i i feel you that must be very painful what you went through i you know um like that uh, but unfortunately we we don't use this very often and uh, from my experience as well with my clients often it gets to the point where they are so um they're so angry deep inside with a partner that they don't want to anymore say it really takes something for them to even you know consider to um truly reach out in order to make difference in these relationships uh mm -hmm. so and of course you know different stages of different relationships but i hope it resonates with some 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 of this with um what I'm talking about with uh, with some of you, let us know. Yeah, when it's um, when it's like left for too long, then it could turn into kind of feeling like the other person or the other half is is disagreeing or attacking or having a having a go, but it's the it's the listening part. It's like I, it, that is probably when it when it's going on for too long, then it could get that far. So, like you say, sometimes mm. it's it's gone so far the other way where the the person 
doesn't really is not even open to to listen or to try mm. to understand mm. yeah so so mm. yeah so then that's where you come in isn't it that's yeah. where you help and, and that's yeah. where we feel very lonely you know it, it's so painful to be in relationship and continuously feel being hurt and hurt and hurt mm. is like you're stabbing the same wound and it hurts more and more because it's open wound and also it's very very painful to be in relationship and feel lonely I feel so lonely and for so many years, you know, so the pain is actually yeah. like it. You're not lonely because you are alone. You've got someone next to you right there, but you still feel lonely. Mm. Yeah. Like there is no more, you know, what I was talking about before, like partnership or, you know, connection or that kind of feeling that you can freely say what you feel. After some yeah. time, you re you're so resigned that you, you lose yourself in, in your own feelings. Like you are not even able to, you know, say what's wrong with you, but something is like really bugging you and you are not able to, you're kind of lost in it because you're not able to communicate it. Or you think it's something, but really what is it is, it's something behind mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Because he annoys me. Because he doesn't tidy up his uh, socks or because he's lazy he's always uh, you know he's he spends the time on a computer and he doesn't you know you know like but is what it is behind it that's what it's really some, hurts you something that is deeper and yeah yeah going yeah on. and it's like i i i love sometimes kind i love uh, watching wife swap and uh because it's so for me you know as a psychologist it's yeah. such a how interesting just subject right like and i know it's a show and stuff but some of the dynamics like it's makes sense yeah. right and there was other day where the woman was complaining oh you know he doesn't want to be with kids he's on computer all the time he doesn't do nothing it was so interesting because he got a wife in this swap who was really engaging and communicating and he and the most importantly she came there as a fresh person with no judging with no shouting with none of that filter like mm -hmm. he is this way you know and she started getting you know kids to play you know games and cards in the evenings together and suddenly it was like unbelievable like in those 10 days you know she's and it was probably painful for that what original wife but you know he was not on computer once he was helping, he was hoovering, he was like, it was completely different man than what she read on the manual, you know, that this, this yeah. his wife left, yeah. left him. So it's very interesting. And one more thing I want to say to remember, in case you heard that, uh, is that just a few minutes ago, we've been talking about relationship where you are not willing to, and you can't even imagine, or maybe you are not even sure whether you still are, want to do something about this relationship. And it's so hard to, you know, even say something nice, like you don't feel like it anymore to say something nice to that person. Because a lot of clients come to me, yes, but at the beginning, yes, but why should I be the one who comes and apologizes? Why should I be the one who reaches out and, you know, like tries and he doesn't, do, you know, like, and of course, it's up to you and you don't have to do anything and it's it's very individual every case but i always <clears throat> kind of believed that it's very healthy to consider that even if you think that you tried everything maybe there is something that you still missed and something fundamentally important that you you didn't even consider trying and a lot of times the pain is getting us in a state where the ego is coming and that's the moment where you know, well I'm not you know whatever like he hurts me I hurt you back and but the thing is if you're in this stage it's what I'm trying to say it's not unrepairable even mm -hmm. though it doesn't seem like real for you specifically like maybe for others but not for me um it, it is still repairable i i give you example i have a lady at the moment like who 
you know, three children. She's got a lot in stake, small children as well, you know, and she really wants to work on her relationships, but on her relationship, but the partner is living, uh, you know, not with, you know, abroad and, and comes only once in a while. And, and she, she is willing to do something, but he is not willing to communicate. Like he doesn't want to, know when when she tries like he gets angry straight away and you know and and for her it's like yes i would like to communicate and i see a lot of things you know that i i i i know i want to communicate because i realize this is my needs in a minute we'll be talking about it but how i'm supposed to do it when he doesn't want to talk and that that might be you know the case of some of you what if the partner doesn't want to you know and, and what I say on this one is that if we approach the person this exactly the same way, like we approached them before, we will only get the same kind of reaction, right? Whether it's grumpiness or whether it's, uh, you know, shouting, whether it's like, you know, they shut down and walk out. You know? blame or whatever it is. So, and, and it needs to be genuine. We, we need to find out what, is the new conversation with new energy with new kind of um uh, and that that's work we need to do inside ourselves like with new commitment like what's our commitment for this relationship that's the very first question if you want to go into successful communication that is going to bring you new outcome is to set the 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 new intention and you know, very strong intention for what what you really want um, in this relationship, or maybe in the process of it, you will realize it's over. Yeah, but that 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 legwork behind it, that work that we do as coaches with you as well, is very very important because you don't want to you know spend forty next forty years of your life with someone who is going to drag you down or. Uh, you know, like stop you in, in living the life that y you, you still can have uh, as, a, as a single person or with someone else and vice versa. You know, if, if it's something that is repairable and still can be beautiful, surprisingly beautiful, which happened to me uh, a lot of times with my clients, that then it's worth to do it now so your kids can watch it and, and catch catch it as as uh, as soon as possible so their uh, environment shifts and they've got a better role models for the future it's doing very long sentences so i paused no, very, very <laughs> but good. hopefully it doesn't make sense does it? it makes sense yeah. yes it does make sense good yeah absolutely and then, then you know then you know okay i've done it and i really got someone else to see it is not just my view it's not just my habits my things that i always do and i because sometimes it's hard to think different ways of talking to people or, or approaching their or them or something but the third person can see it from the bird's eye mm. view mm. and can, can help to to make you to to for you to can help you to open your eyes and see all right okay i can do it this way i can be interested in what he's doing today rather than asking him have you done this or have you done i just ask for example how was your day you know just be interested maybe uh, this is just an example mm -hmm. so yeah and then you know that you've done everything you've got that help you've done it yeah. and then if it then doesn't make sense or doesn't work then you know you can kind of let go and do what you need to do yes you know i think that's very greatly said Zuzi. like i i'm also ambassador of you know let's do everything what is possible from our side especially when you have a kid and when you have a lot in stake yeah uh, and then you know if he's really like you exhaust all the options you know like really genuinely everything then maybe maybe that's it but then, you know, you will never, as I said at the very beginning, you will never get to the point of your life where you are very old and you will still have the thought that maybe I should have mm. tried this or done this or, you know, like that. 
like you have a clean shield and that's priceless because that that is the thing that gives you a peace of mind in life yeah exactly yeah to, to, to have so that let feeling. us know let us know please if you have experience or if you know or you see no heard or you know just share with us as well share with us in the meantime i'm going to move a little bit forward mm. and let's go we will go through like 10 reasons are prepared here and you can add more of course there are other ones but we have we, you know 10 reasons here why relationships don't seem to last where they don't seem to last and we'll briefly go through them and let us know your comments and maybe we'll say a couple of things uh to go with them as well so number one Zuzi, do you want to go ahead so number one is you are afraid to ask what you really want mm. yeah because sometimes it's really we don't know it's hard to know what we want so you can ask if you don't know what you want or you can't communicate it or mm. you can't explain what's happening if, if you don't know what you want so, i yeah. think when first time i was reading men are from mars women are from venus that was one of the first things that was my aha moment those years ago where i realized i was like, really really it's so obvious a man doesn't don't see it <laughs> and that's very true right like for us for you and me for girlfriends talking to each other it's like you know it's like duh you know but for men genuinely yeah. their brain is so different to ours and is really not obvious whatever is obvious to us so it's very important to clearly communicate and, and say it's easy, yeah want. and it's easy to mean? say or express what we don't want or mm. what we don't like mm. that's i think that's more easier to say or express what we don't like or don't want so yeah mm. what we do want and you, as a as a relationship coach, maybe you might have some um, some tips or things that to to know to to help help people know or women know to find out what do how do you know what you want you know mm. what do you do how do you find out what I really want? It's a completely other chapter, and we can do it sometime. Yeah. Uh, what I would say on this one, that's very good point, Zuzi, because how man is supposed to fulfill on our wishes when we don't even know what our wishes, what our needs are. Yeah. So that's where, again, you know, this, this wonderful work of personal development, discovering who we are, discovering what what we need um what uh, lights us up what uh, when do we need what you know like listening to our bodies listening where it's getting a little bit too much or a bit too loud or you know what works for us what doesn't work for us. i mean so amazing and i'm still being amazed even 20 years later about what else i'm discovering about myself because every time i find out something new for myself it makes my life easier richer more joyful um and 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 it's easier for me obviously to communicate it to my husband and then he's clear about who i am and what i need and how he can make me happy because the thing is if man loves you he wants to make you happy there is no yeah. i mean men love to make us happy if he cares right he, they love to make us happy and they love nothing more than when we appreciate their effort. Mm. They love to be our heroes. They love to make us happy. They love to see us, you know, um, thriving and yeah, like that. So what I say on your questions, Zuzi, uh, is that the great, one of the greatest gifts for relationships um, and for lasting relationships is to getting to know ourselves and really finding out what what it, who we are so yeah. we can communicate uh, our needs for example and it changes uh, it's changeable yeah. right so that's why the communication is so important because yeah, you can say one week I, I'm this or I feel like this and then the next week or next day it doesn't really is not what it was yesterday so 
yeah so really tune in to what is happening inside mm. you mm. and come in okay. number two Two, you are afraid to say no to what you don't want. Same thing applies. You need to get to know yourself. What mm. is not doing you good? Yeah. If you know that, uh, I'm trying to find different example because I realize that something, something you don't like. Like for example, I really don't like hovering. Like I don't like hovering. If I can delegate that, but I love folding clothes. For example. I mean, it's a silly example, it's housework, but it can be anything. Uh, I don't know, like being too much on a sunshine or loud noise. I don't like, like, like loud noise. And I know it, uh, you know, after some time, I, I need to walk out. Yeah. But, you know, uh, um, something that you don't like about your partner or your partner requires from you, like, sex every saturday I, I don't know like example right but you don't really feel like because you've been cleaning all all day and you're so tired at the end of the saturday that last thing you want to do is to you know is a is another chore mm -hmm. for you you don't have energy sure. for you know so mm -hmm. if it doesn't work for you you need to say no with love with uh, not even like with explanation but with sharing your feeling with your husband saying darling you know i i love you and i would love to make love with you but you know and i know who you i understand you need it on a regular basis or whatever but you know like sunday morning when i feel fresh and rested it was so much nicer for me or, or something like that i just uh, used the uh, example yeah so number two you uh, one of the reasons why relationships don't seem to last because you feel like you have to keep on doing something to please him but it really doesn't resonate with you yeah mm. number three and that goes That's with the reason. third one doesn't it you are not willing to enforce your boundaries connected it's yeah. very connected yeah so it's connected it's your boundaries when you say no and you know your boundaries like okay that when you know your boundaries then you know okay these are my boundaries and he when he knows your boundaries and like okay if i push just past those boundaries that's it it's not gonna work so knowing each other's boundaries as well very important and i want to say on this one i i have ex um in my practice at the moment, I, I have, um, again, one lady who have not, you know, she's almost 40 and all her life as a trait, she never gave clear boundaries to people around her. She, it just wasn't in her, you, you know, she was built to be yes girl, a good girl, you know, the girl who pleases people. Mm. And now she realized it really doesn't work for her. Yeah, she really done this inside job in her and, and it's really the, the more people push her boundaries, the more it irritates her. And, oh. But she's just in this stage where she knows where it doesn't work with her. But she doesn't know yet how to communicate because it's completely new territory. Mm. It's, like, it's like, how do I say it? How do I find the courage to say it? And will yeah. they ever talk to me again if i say something like that they are not used to it and people are not used to it so how they do they react and if you do it first time it will maybe a little bit clumsy and you will feel ridiculous because it's new mm -hmm. uh and they, they will respond certainly don't be afraid don't get scared you know once you know that is firm and and the more you try the more firmer um, it will become for you the more comfortable you will feel in it. It's very, very important, girls. Especially your own with someone like you say, for someone that is used to and most of your life, uh, you say yes and you please people and you want the best for people and you do everything to people, mm. then saying no mm. and trying to create those boundaries is another. It, it brings up whole different things, you know. Mm. What if they? What if they leave me? Or what mm. if they? If I say no, what if this and that? So, yes, it is. Mm. 
Yeah. But mm. boundaries are um, very important because Fundamental. at least we know about ourselves and we know about it other person and we know how far we can go and what we can or what happens what if we go over those boundaries mm. so yeah and then same with health you know it's same about yourself if you know that okay if i i've done this worked so hard today or had a busy day and that's it you know if i push a bit more if i if i do just this one email if i just do this one I'm going to go over my limit yes. and, and yes. it's going to show somewhere. So I do expect, you do, you do expect something to happen. If nothing happens, good. But if something happens and you are next day, like really tired, exhausted, mm. headache, and that mm. didn't drink enough, then you know, all right, I've gone over those boundaries. Mm. I've gone over that limit. So it works in lots of different areas of our life I'm, and ourselves. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it because after my burnouts, uh every day i've got a moment where it's like enough yeah, yeah. and i let go and literally whatever is in my i mean obviously i know roughly like what kind of appointments i need to do that's why i'm not planning for the late stages of the day anything important or calls or urgent uh and you know sometimes it doesn't work that way but if possible i move everything for earlier times in a day because i know that's how i operate right and like i've got more energy in the morning and early afternoon and then i'm kind of like slowing down but that's because i learned my boundaries in terms of what works for my health my energy levels my general well-being you know like and it works for me and it, it really gives me that healthy um yeah yeah, and it reflects in our right. relationships as well. You know, if you're tired and you still have to do anything, and that comes attached with that comes attachment. Oh, I still have to do that one more email, mm. and you get more mm. and more irritated and more and more tired. And, they re and then the husband says, yeah, and then the <laughs> husband says something, then he gets something yeah. because you know. Then that's how it affects everything. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, good. Definitely okay very quickly number four you depend on your partner to feel better self-explanatory right i don't have to say much about it i hope those who've been watching us for years very important happy within yourself your partner is a bonus okay that's the fundamental mm. rule that i believe totally in uh, number five you overrate the importance of complementarity very quickly you know, sometimes we have this ideal of being, you know, you know like this. Yeah. Right match. We like have this. to be nice and rosy, flowers and compliments and all that. He's yeah. the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think these ideals we more have like in our maybe 20s or, you know, the more experience. So you can, obviously, some couples are more compliment complimentary each other more some some less but you know it really is the older i am the more i'm realizing that is really about choice it's really about yeah. choice and you know deep inside when you somewhere along the line being with your partner you made a choice to be with him it wasn't on a wedding day it was probably before or maybe sometimes later like, but but deep inside, you kind of made that, you choose love, love basically. You choose love, love. And being in a long-term partnership, I think sometimes you need to choose love over and over again. Yeah? yeah. Especially times when you don't maybe feel like choosing love, right? And that's that's one of the, you know, I think reasons why long-term partnerships last and they are even being nurtured in challenging situations and that's why they last and they you know they get even stronger through yeah through and i like when you said you choose love and and love choosing love starts with with yourself mm. you need to love yourself first and know how to love yourself so that you can choose love or not choose you can yeah so choose loving loving yourself first and then once once you do you love yourself then everything 
everything else, loving everything else and everyone else is it's it's like a byproduct of that or comes from that. So if we have a if, if there is something going on inside or don't like things about ourselves, how can we appreciate it and be open about that towards others or the partner in this instance? Absolutely. Or see how he can be uh, like that or like this. If maybe on a surface, but not true. Not because yeah. some people say, "Oh yeah, but I love other people, but I don't feel that kind, the same kind of love towards myself." Is not. It can't be authentic. Hmm. Deep inside, you're not going. I guarantee you, you're not. You're going to judge them deep inside. You are going to not forgive them just the way you're not forgiving yourself. Uh, little mistakes you do. It can't, can't possibly be uh, genuine. Or, or you're covering it like uh, you love them in order to get the same kind of love back or sympathy yeah. or, or whatever, attention. Yeah. yeah. Being straight with you today. <laughs> okay, very quickly. Uh, so we are talking about 10 reasons why your relationships don't seem to last when they don't last. Uh, you don't have a good role models for healthy relationships we are talking families upbringing parents yeah move on because i talk yeah. about it a lot um, number seven you have a low standards for emotional maturity uh, it goes for your partner but it can be also your own one uh, number eight you gossip about your relationship that's an interesting one huh yeah it's an interesting one yeah so it's, it's uh, with other words, if you're bitching about your partner, to your family, to your friends, to your, you know, whoever, you're already creating, well, A, creating that kind of energy that it doesn't nurture your heart. Uh, and and it's your already creating a new mm. relationship because how does, you know, turn it around? How would yeah. you like yeah. your partner's parents, and Spending your, friends? your time and energy doing, doing that why not spending that time and energy nurturing that relationship or trying to find ways to make it better yeah. or ways co you know communicate and you're again and, kind yeah. of already digging yourself a hole and your relationship a hole because even if it would work out imagine next family do you know how awkward it's going to be like when you know it, it's yes, just exactly yeah so, that's yeah. why it's it's very important to rather find professional who you can authentically share everything with or, or one good friend who you can totally trust but you know like not not gossip to many people mm. and, and that that's very common actually um number nine you have unrealistic expectations about your partner let's face it don't we all at the beginning we want a tall dark you know, with a tan, macho, perfect at sports, good husband, great father, uh, someone who we can laugh with, amazing lover. But really, can we have all of it? All, I mean, all in one person. I mean, you know, yes, it's great. It's amazing to have a person who's got most of those and Thank you, God, I have it with my husband, but not everything. Some things I compensate and I have with my girlfriends because he is not a girl. You know, he's not able to give me that kind of what I need with my girlfriends. But that and comes I, with love. That comes with love, right? So my kids are back. When, when you love your second half, your half, when you love your husband or partner, whoever it is, then that then you see the beauty in that, that person. So it's the expectations that are the I don't know the the, the the physical, the ones that you just see, but when you actually love that person, yes. You Talking love the, 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 how they are, the whole of them, you know, everything. <laughs> Talking about love, I'm, I'm going to open the door to my kids. Your kids. Because they... it's, yeah, let them in. So that's expectations. <laughs> the last one is, you know, you don't know what your values are. Hello, girls. You don't know what your values are. So, hello. <laughs> 
So I just said the last one. You don't know what your values are. So if yes. you don't know your values, if you don't know what you're, what, what you're valuing in life, in yourself, about yourself, uh, then how can you try and understand and make that relationship work? Yeah. And also so knowing their values as well, you know, it's what they value in life. Then because in life and about themselves. So that there is, you know, you can talk about it. It's something to talk about, right? In, in, um, yes. It's something to, to nice com conversation to have. Okay, so what are your values? What do you value in life? And what do you value about yourself? And find out about that. Yes. Sorry, no? Susie, I was disturbing you. Yeah, I was excited. I, I've done it. I finished it now. So we covered the whole, the 10 points. So that's it. We, we finished. Yeah, so I, I think to wrap it all up, um, choose love. You know, whatever form it takes in your life, in this point of your life, whatever it means, whether to stay or to go, yeah. in terms of your relationship, choose love. Because life spent with choices that you you make from the space of love are the ones you will never regret never and they mm. it will always take you forward to something often very unexpected and beautiful and that's what i wish for you guys for for life to be that kind of exciting life where you might not know what is around the corner but but you know that you're going right direction yeah and start with loving yourself mm. first. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Zuzi. Thank you for your also for contribution to this whole thing. Guys, if you like it, share it. We would love to also see your comments or you know some suggestions for our future streamings. We have a list of them already, so we always pick and choose, and you know we are trying to always uh, talk about things that we believe that would be interesting for you and maybe even contribute to your life right now thank you so much for watching and we will see you probably in two weeks time because uska is celebrating her birthday soon <laughs> yeah happy birthday and it's half Susie. term as well we've got half term next week so yeah so i'm going to take some time off Yes, and we will be happy to be with you again for now. Have a beautiful spring weekend and we'll see you soon again. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. Bye.